Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. While the war in Ukraine approaches the two-year mark, there has been some sort of shadow boxing this week over potential peace talks. In Davos, Ukrainian President Zelensky got the Swiss government to host a peace conference at some point in the future without inviting Russia. Then Moscow's foreign minister Lavrov shot back, saying that Ukraine would not decide when to begin any serious talks and that the West was not interested in negotiations anyway. The West, meanwhile, seemed to get its act together as far as further military support is concerned. Some EU countries committed to additional measures, and the EU in general is now ready to approve its 50 billion euro package soon, with or without Hungary, that has been blocking it for months. I think it's very important uh, to engage with all 27 member states of the European Union to get um, the 50 billion euro for four years for Ukraine up and running. And my personal priority is to have an agreement by 27. Uh, if this is not possible, we are prepared for an agreement by 26. There is a renewed sense of urgency as aid for Ukraine from its biggest donor by far, the United States, is mired in political infighting in Washington. And then there is the prospect of Donald Trump returning to the White House next year, however speculative at this point, which could mean an end to U.S. support for Ukraine altogether. A nightmare for many in Europe, but a nightmare against which there is a great remedy, according to the Belgian EU presidency. Just wake up. If 2024 brings us America first again, it will be more than ever Europe on its own. We should, as Europeans, not fear that prospect. We should embrace it. We should embrace it by putting Europe on a more solid footing. Stronger, more sovereign, more self-reliant. True, Trump won the Iowa caucuses overwhelmingly this week, but it is still a long way to go to election day in November. The U.S. presidential election is not the only one with major ramifications for Europe this year. A week ago, the people of Taiwan elected a new president who basically refuses to cave before Beijing, who considers the island a runaway province. The European reaction to this democratic expression was rather muted. Is Europe too fearful of negative reactions from Beijing? Joining me now is Mareike Ulberg, senior fellow at the Indo-Pacific program of the German Marshall Fund and head of the Stockholm China Forum. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So the election in Taiwan was one of the most closely watched geopolitical events of the year. Yet in the run-up of the vote, the European Union barely noticed it at all. Is Taiwan a too hot potato? There is, of course, still some reluctance in commenting on it to some degree. Um, presumably there is still some nervousness about offending China to some degree. So there is a little bit of a dance around some of that. But overall, people here are paying much more closely attention now than just a few years ago. The official EU position is... Yes to bilateral ties with Taiwan, but no political recognition or diplomatic recognition. That being said, do you see an opportunity for closer cooperation now that the election is over? Um, I think what we can do is continue some of the cooperation that's already been taking place or some, some more close coordination we've had in the last couple of years. I mean, we've had some visits, primarily from parliaments, delegations visiting Taiwan. Um, that is one thing that has happened. And then we've also seen some careful, more careful ties at the ministerial level, um, where, for instance, ministries um, went to Taiwan to talk to their Taiwanese counterparts. And I think it's particularly these smaller corporations, establishing ties and making sure that Europe is invested in Taiwan, where I see the most benefit. Yeah, you, you mentioned these visits. There were last year actually 28 visits um, by uh, EU parliamentary and government delegations, uh, a new record. How do you interpret that interest on the European side? 
Europe can't really offer Taiwan that much in terms of security and concrete defense. Um, I think most European Europe does not have the capacity to do that. But one thing that Europe can do um, is signal an interest in, in Taiwan and try to signal to the Chinese government that Europe has a vested interest and in stability in the Taiwan Strait and that Europe would be firmly opposed to any any attempt to change the status quo through military military means or through coercion. All right, Marika Ulberg, China expert at the German Marshall Fund. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. The presidential election in Taiwan was a thriller, as it wasn't clear during the campaign who would finally win. Such a situation is unthinkable in Russia, which will go to the polls in March. Any guess who will be the next Russian president? Hmm? Exactly. This week, Vladimir Putin's campaign announced that more than two million Russians have signed documents in support of him. Under Russian law, independent candidates must gather at least 300,000 signatures from 40 regions or more to get on the ballot. Putin has already collected 2.5 million signatures, one million more than in 2018. If desired, we can collect more, the Kremlin spokesman said rather laconically. Well, I'm sure you can, and I'm also sure Putin will win. In a way, I find it rather reassuring that there are some things in life that never change. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grobe. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.